Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about how batteries work. And uh, this is an automotive storage battery. This is your typical lead acid battery. And uh, basically what's inside of this are a number of cells. And each cell, there's actually six of, uh, of these cells in a 12 volt battery. And uh, they're separated by separators. Each uh, cell has the potential of producing from one and a half to 2.2 volts. And these cells consist of a series of plates. Uh, one set of plates are called positive plates and they have a coating of lead peroxide paste that actually adheres to a lead grid and the other plates are the negative plates and they're just made out of sponge lead. These plates or cells are submerged in acid which is called electrolyte and when you have two dissimilar metals in the presence of an acid and you have a complete circuit the battery will start to produce current. Uh, you might notice I said automotive storage battery. Basically the battery as it sits here is doing nothing but storing the essential elements necessary to produce electricity when you complete a circuit. On top of the battery we have a positive post and a negative post. The positive post is slightly larger, that's labeled plus. That has to be connected to the car's electrical system using the positive battery cable and the negative post is ground. That has to be connected to a metal part of the car on the frame or on the engine. So it has to be connected correctly. If you hook a battery up backwards in a car, uh, you're going to wipe out all your computers. You're going to do a lot of expensive damage instantly and uh, that's something you don't want to do. So if you don't know anything about connecting up a battery, don't even try to do it. Uh, I want to talk to you about a different type of battery. Um, this is an Optima battery and this battery uses spiral cell technology. If you actually look at the sides of the case it looks like a little six, six pack. It's a number of different circles on it and the cells instead of being flat plates are actually wound in a circle with a separator. It is still uh, you know two dissimilar metals in the presence of an acid but this is a sealed battery. Um, the nice thing about these batteries, there are several uh, big advantages to these batteries, but one thing is nothing spills out of them. I can turn this battery on its side, I can turn it upside down, I can turn it sideways, and none of the acid is going to spill out of this battery. Uh, in fact, I've seen some demonstrations by Optima where they've actually uh, taken this battery and shot it with a gun and still have it start a car and not uh, leak a lot of material out of it because the electrolyte is actually absorbed by the uh, by the plates so it doesn't it's not free floating inside the battery. The other night unique thing about this battery is the cold cranking amps. Batteries are rated by cold cranking amps and by amp power capacity and this has almost twice as many cold cranking amps as a regular uh, lead acid battery that we showed you earlier. In fact the CCAs on this are 750 cold cranking amps at zero degrees is where that's measured and that's quite a bit. Most are uh, you know, much less than that. Sometimes it's about 125 cold cranking amps. And uh, the reserve capacity on this battery is also much uh, greater. And uh, again, uh, the, you know, this battery has, has more cranking amps. Uh, one of the disadvantages, however, to the Optima battery is the price. They're very expensive. They cost about two to two and a half times more than a regular battery, but they do last longer. So it's not uncommon for these batteries to last six or seven years if you keep them charged. As with any battery, if you let it discharge, it's, it's, these, it's going to start to sulfate and you won't be able to charge it back up again. So always keep your battery charged. In fact, on this car, which is a hobby car, a couple things that I have. This is a battery cutoff switch right here. So when this vehicle is parked, all I do is I unscrew the switch like this. These are very inexpensive. You can buy them for about 10 or $12 and all the electrical power cut off in the car so I don't have to worry about something shorting out or something happening when I'm not around and the battery's not going to drain as rapidly but obviously uh, on, on some of the newer cars you want to be concerned about your presets so uh, this car does, uh, I don't have to worry about the losing the presets on the radio because they're mechanical uh, the only thing I'm losing is uh, the time on the clock I'd have to reset my clock and the clock does work in this vehicle uh, so that's a major disadvantage of that uh, on some of the newer cars you can still use these battery cutoff switches and they have a little bypass that goes around so you can actually connect here and go to the cable and keep all your uh, presets and your keep alive memory in your computer going and you don't have to worry about losing any of that. But uh, I like these batteries because they don't leave a mess 
they're much easier to maintain. They work well in extreme heat and they work well in extreme cold. And uh, I say the only big disadvantage is what they cost. This is a yellow top, which is a deep cycle battery. Uh, for most automotive use, you can use the red top. They also have a blue top, which is a marine type battery. Uh, you can find these in some of the discount stores and chain automotive parts retailers now, so they're being more widely distributed than what they used to be. But uh, I like those batteries. That's why it's, I have one in my car and I have uh, several others in my other vehicles too.